Hello YouTube, welcome back to Kind Heart Homestead. My name is Ben and I'm up here on our off-grid property in the mountains of Virginia. I'm here in our solar shed, which is pretty much furnished now. We're just kind of uh, waiting for me to finish up the trims around the windows and the doors. The first one is over this tiny little toilet window here in the bathroom. If you recall, I tried to center it over the toilet with the same size trim on both sides. And I might have to rip those pieces, but because this is the smallest window, it's gonna take the least amount of materials. So I wanted to use that window as an experiment before I move on and mirror those techniques to these three windows, which are the same size. I should be able to mass produce these by cutting the boards for all three windows at the same time. That'll make it a lot easier to assemble. Another reason to start this one first is because it's going to be a bit more custom than the other ones. These ones are going to have casings and jams that can be pre-assembled, hopefully outside and then pushed into place. Just a full square all the way around. The one in the bathroom, however, is going to have a windowsill that protrudes just a bit past the jams. And that's how I'm used to doing it. It's actually a bit easier, at least for me, to visualize it. Once I put the windowsill in first, and I have something fixed in place to measure against. I've never actually done the pre-assembly and insert method. So I'm gonna start in the bathroom where I'm a bit more comfortable with the technique, just see how all the materials and tools work, and then I'll move on to the windows. I'm not actually sure how much progress I'll make today, so this video might just be the bathroom window alone. So if you wanna see that, stay tuned, and I'll be right back. Let's start by taking a close look at the bathroom window as it exists right now in its unfinished state. There's rough cut drywall all around the window, as well as some exposed framing material. We're going to start by placing the window sill down to conceal the bottom portion of this unfinished window opening. I have a 1x6 block right here that I cut to the appropriate length, and I have my pattern drawn on it. I took measurements with a tape measure, and I also held the board up to the window just to make sure the measurements weren't off. And now I'm gonna make a few small cuts with the table saw just to cut these little squares out of the corner. The reason this is T-shaped is because the bottom of that T fits inside of the rough opening of the window. And then the wider area is going to protrude out into the room that way we could set maybe a potted plant or something on the windowsill. It's just a common style. So two of these cuts, I get to use the guard on my table saw. That way I can have parallel cuts, but then the other two, I need to do freehand because this board is not actually cut square. If it's not square, you can't use it on the guide of your table saw. I could have used a cross cut sled, but this cut is so small that I don't really need to do that. And besides, all of these cut edges are going to be concealed with paintable caulk all around the window. I would say that out of any of the cutting tools, the table saw has the potential to be the most dangerous because it's the only one where the blade actually faces right at you. I've used this tool enough to be confident to make small cuts like these without any sort of guide or guard or clamp, things like that. But if you're a novice, I definitely recommend you use more safety precautions than I did in this situation. Now it's time to test fit the windowsill. As you can see, it actually fits pretty flush against the window, but on the right side there's a bit of a gap, and that's because of the feathered corner caused by the drywall compound. You can see as I trace my pencil against the wall, the line is not parallel at all to the front face. There's a slight triangle, a tiny little wedge that would look like a shim that I actually need to remove to push this all the way back into its permanent position. This really doesn't make much of a difference because all the gaps will be concealed by caulk, but because I'm used to staining wood and doing uh, proper finished carpentry techniques, I really like my joints to be as tight as possible. So now when we put this back in, you can see what a difference it makes. The back part of the windowsill fits flush against the window the entire way across, 
and there is only a slight gap that needs to be filled by the paintable caulk afterwards. I'm extremely happy with the result so far, and it's definitely good practice for our house. I would say that rough framing carpentry and finished carpentry are kind of two different trades or skill sets. Framing tends to be kind of imprecise just due to the nature of the wood that you're working with. You don't really need to make precise cuts because all the mistakes, all of the inconsistencies are going to be concealed. But with finished carpentry, especially if you plan to sand and stain your wood, you want your joints to be very tight and you want all of your edges and joints to be very precise. So what you can see I'm doing here is accounting for the imperfections in the framing around the window. Most people would use shims to make their trim level, but what I decided to do was adopt a technique I recently saw on YouTube where you use some drywall screws, and basically these are just acting as shims, but they're adjustable. So as you can see, every time I put my level on, I want to dial it in closer and closer to perfectly level by giving these each a quarter of a turn at a time until my windowsill fits perfectly level front to back as well as side to side. Now that this board is as perfect as I can get it, it's time to move on to the next phase of the project. Now I'm taking a measurement from the inside of the window material to the inside surface of the finished drywall. And as you can see here, it's pretty consistently three and a half inches, which is perfect because I purchased one by fours, which are by definition three and a half inches wide. So now I need to cut those to length. I had measured the height of the window as well as the width. I'm cutting a top piece to the full width while the bottom pieces are essentially the full height minus three quarters for the top piece. The top piece essentially sits on the two side pieces and then that entire assembly forms the window jamb. That's J-A-M-B. I don't know why it's called that or who invented the terminology, but essentially the inside trim of the window or door is the jam. And I believe the outside trim is called the casing. And I'm not saying inside and outside, like the interior of your building versus the exterior of your building. I'm saying the inside and outside as inside the cavity where your window sits versus outside of the finished drywall, or if you ran your hand across the drywall, you would run into the piece of wood. That piece of wood on the outside of your drywall would be the casing. So as you can see here, I'm tracing one board to the next to make sure that my two side pieces are exactly the same height. That's a nice trick, so you don't have to take your tape measure out and measure it again. So let's put these pieces in place and see how they fit. Since I didn't rip these pre-primed boards, it doesn't make a difference as to which side they go on. But if you did have to rip them, if your jam was less than three and a half inches, then you would need to be conscious to put the cut edge against the window so it would no longer be seen to the naked eye. Here is a close-up of all of the boards in place, but nothing has been nailed yet, just in case I have to make adjustments. So now I am just kind of doing a quick tracing of these bottom trim pieces onto the windowsill, just so I know where my nails can go. The only reason to do that is so I don't have to fill those nail holes. I can simply conceal them by the pieces that go up top. So now I'm just gonna do a quick sanding and priming of this board before we install it. Typically I would do something fancy with my router, but in this case, a simple sand to break down the sharp edge is good enough for us.
The jams along with the windowsill look great, but now it's time to move on to the casing. This is a bit unique compared to the rest of the windows in our building because I have the window so close to an inside corner. I also have a little drywall lip, which is essentially the same width to the other side. So I'm ripping two pieces of these 1x4s down to the exact length needed to fit with the same reveal on both sides of the window while keeping this design symmetrical. Because I barely ripped anything off, I'm leaving the top one at the full width that it came in. That's the 3.5 inches. And you can see a bit of a slight gap on the right. That's all going to be filled in with caulk. But now it's time to fill all of the gaps. So I'm going to completely caulk the seams between all of the trim and the window, all of the seams between the jam and the casing, and then all of the seams between the casing and the finished drywall. So I'm pretty much complete with all of the boards that you've seen me cut so far. But what I haven't addressed is the little transition underneath the windowsill to the drywall. There's a simple solution for that, and that's just to cut a board the same width as the full assembly measured from the outside of the casing on both sides. So then I just nail it off and caulk the seams just like I did with the rest of it. And then I'm also going back with my putty knife and wood filler to fill the rest of the nail holes. I am using two and a half inch nails and I'm aiming for the studs everywhere that I put the nails in. 
That's why I don't have to do as many nails. Because this product is three quarters of an inch thick, I feel like it's less likely to bend, at least less likely than, say, crown molding to bend or any other sort of milled trim pieces that have a very thin edge or you might need shorter nails. Well, behind me is the, I would say, 90% complete window trim. You can see these little brown globs. That is the wood filler that I use to fill the nail holes. That will dry, and it's not going to be as noticeable once it dries, with that color, I mean. But then I'll sand it down, and I'm going to give this a full, fresh coat of enamel trim paint. I'll probably do that with the rest of the windows once those are trimmed out. And if you want to see how all that goes, please click that subscribe button. And we will see you here next time on Kind Heart Homestead. Thanks. Bye.